there this time. Yeah, at least that it's, works. Because it wasn't working last time. So no, it wasn't. Yeah, I was. Yeah, I see like that. It's not even showing up. Not getting any response. I can attend a lot more than if I the travel time or the whatever in the case of some of those meetings for the young He worked with that in for about 30 years. No, I've not been in there since the other day. Should I go get it? <laughs> so you do a Francia tax in the city of Bay. Yeah. Well, our two cities already has, have it. Has an economic development. Well, that could be interesting. I don't think that'll change the. No, not, not without more education. I'll trip over to Ontario on the street. No, we're not. I mean, tell them almost because I've had people with these. I thought it was over 50. Yeah, I was coming during the summer and it was early 80s. Where was that? Ontario. 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 Just Ontario. Ontario. Just Ontario. 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 We don't have things in Texas anymore. They're pro business in Oregon. <laughs> yeah, right. They're pro constitutional rights in Oregon. They're pro. Oh, yeah. 
Do you have anybody zooming in right. for the Beach Street extension? Thank you. I'll have no. It'll be down there on the right. So I'm doing it. actually at my bar. Yeah, I hate to say something stupid, but you need to shut down your laptop and then restart it. We just did that. Oh, just did. Did. Okay. Yeah. And it's one of the things I was thinking too. <laughs> one of our only go to. <laughs> it's like, I always wait a while before I do that, but that's usually 90% of the time. <laughs> Let's plan on the first and third Wednesday of every month to come up and try this out at nine o'clock. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. So we don't have to run into this problem again, and then yeah. we're trying to get something going. It, it works fine for a couple times, and then. Stop. Yeah. Long time. Shall we go ahead and convene just with audio? Yeah, let me. I'm going to turn on. I can turn on. I think. <laughs> we have a good minute to take her. She can capture the word and stuff. I did say it was audio. Oh, okay. I don't Part of the problem is people, other people come in and use the room and and they adjust things. Yeah. I was wondering if that was an issue. Yeah. You got it? I heard music. Well, the speaker's working, but. I had the audio that finally worked. So. There. Where do I get this? Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, Microphone's working. All right, so we have a computer. Mm -hmm. It'll record, but... We have to All right. We might have to proceed just with what we got. I'm going to look into this. I'm going to do some research to see if there's any information somewhere that I can find. Okay. All right. Welcome, everybody. Sorry for the delay. Technology doesn't always cooperate. Um, it is Wednesday, May 15th. You'll stand and join us for the Pledge of Allegiance, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Right. Um, we've already taken care of accounts payable. Late items. Any late items for the agenda? No. no. Not hearing any. Agenda approval. I move to approve today's Harney County Court meeting agenda. A second. Motion has been made and seconded to approve today's uh, county court agenda. Any further discussion? And hearing none. All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 And opposed. And hearing none, motion carries. Minutes approval from the May 1st uh, county court session and the work session on April 29th. 
Um, I move to approve the Harney County work session of April 29th. Second. A motion has been made and seconded to approve the minutes of the work, uh, county court work session of April 29th. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 And opposed? And hearing none, motion carries. And then the May 1st county court minutes. I move to approve the Harney County Court meeting minutes May 1st, 2024. Second. Uh, motion has been made and seconded to approve Harney County Court minutes from May 1st. Any further discussion? And hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 And opposed? Hearing none, motion carries. Um, next topic on the agenda is um, uh, longevity, uh, time and service recognition of Cheryl Runnels. I recognize her for 10 years of service with Harney County. And as I've said in the past, I appreciate the, the service of our Harney County employees and uh, greatly appreciate their time, their efforts, and continued years of service with the county. Any other comments? No. Uh, congratulations to Cheryl. Glad to have her. And our customary um, device of uh, recognition serve years of service device. And I will hand deliver that to her. And next topic is uh, opportunity for public comment. Anybody from the public? Sir, please stand state your name. Rick Fallburn, uh, OTAC meeting, or um, Department of Transportation meeting upon the 9th. A couple of things I learned. One is that Highway 20 is the only two lane highway that's approved for three trailers uh, in the state of Oregon instead of just the freeways. So we may be seeing more of the UPS uses of rather frequently now. Um, even though the road is unsafe and they agreed upon that, they still allow them to do it. Found out none of them had seen the um, video of the passing of the car. So I'm going to see if the sheriff can give that to me so I can forward it on to them. We have a new commissioner, Jeff Baker, who is in charge of rest areas and I spoke to him at the night before dinner and then at the meeting about the unsanitariness of um, the Brothers Oasis and use emphasis on medical um, with the people that are having dialysis and the people that are having infusions from cancers. And all five of the commissioners commented they'd never thought. So, so you're proposing some water to be available? Or, or I just... suppose they tear the damn thing down, put up something decent. Mm -hmm. um, what they had before? Yeah, mm -hmm. at least. Mm -hmm. um, so they are, the other thing that is quite clear, they are in the finance box of polling. They cannot get their heads out of it. Um, and so we need to be thinking of some options for them. Um, and they are pretty completely focused on Portland. Two different commissioners commented, whatever we do in Portland benefits the state. And I sat there quietly. Um, because to me, if you're gonna do that, then you'll build a four lane freeway to Coos Bay, the only other deep water port between San Francisco and, and Canada. You'll develop that port and that will take all the transportation out of the mid part of the state. And the southern part of the state, you wouldn't have to worry about the damn port roads and port roads because there wouldn't be anybody on. But I didn't say that. <laughs> um, you know, the when about to the coast the comments that were going on in the 1950s and 60s would have helped some of the transportation problems there in Portland. They are not so you might want to be thinking they are going to have a whole new package, finance package in 25. Um and we probably need to be feeding Mark right now and Mike or whomever takes Lynn's place to uh, give them with some ideas on other finance options. Because tolling is going to come here. There's no question that there is something because the existing one says for the not for the five and that it allows it to be any place to go. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, the other comment. Uh, transit tax. Um, I paid $154 for the Best Western room 
the actual total was over two hundred and ten dollars wow. with additional taxes on it. That's in Ontario. Right? That's in Ontario. Um, I I get the um, observer from over there and an article last week's I put in Mr. Shellman's box is on the city of Vail is considering one based on economic development. They think it will increase economic development. No, but they can earmark it towards it. Yeah, they're thirty percent. You know, so anyhow, there are other movements going on uh, on transit taxes in this journey. I think. Burns and Hines has transient tax, but the county does not. I think we're the only county in the state that doesn't. We've tried it twice since I've been a commissioner. Our voters <laughs> don't vote it in, even though it would help us better yeah. financially. I made a copy of that article as well, <laughs> just for reference. Uh, and then as far as the comment about um, ODOT and their efforts focusing around Portland and that whatever they do there filters out, uh, this year at the uh, uh, Business Oregon, uh, it's usually a Business Oregon and an AOC joint leadership conference, but this year at that, it was pretty much run by Business Oregon from the from the governor's office, right. and the same comment was made at that at that uh, session at that uh, summit that uh, Portland is the economic driver of the state of Oregon. Now. Yeah, do they have a lot of is 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 there a lot of economic dollars that go through Portland? Absolutely. But I can't recall myself anytime anything that was ever done in Portland filtered all the way down to Harney County. So that that seems to be the sentiment right now is that Portland is the focus. Any other public comments? No person waiting to get in. No. Yeah. I'd like to make a comment. Sure. I didn't drop, right? I just wanted to say I really appreciated the letter that was drafted to Learning Water Resource Department. I thought it was strongly worded and well worded, and I appreciate your efforts on holding them to task. Thank you. It's a good letter. I believe we have that on our agenda. Yes, it is. Any other public comment? All right. Um, got the owls work. Yeah. How? We don't I, just know. Tried, I just tried it one more time and it came up. So, um, okay. Uh, so, moving along then, um, up to uh, old business, the uh, court order for the Trout Creek Road easement vacation. So, um, we received an application from the applicant, the landowner, to uh, vacate the county's right away on that piece of property road right away and it, there's no actual road there it's just when it's when a piece of property is sold in tax foreclosure proceedings the county retains uh, the right for a right away should we need one uh, several of these pieces of property that were in question here are encompassed by private property owned by trout creek so so there's very little chance if ever that there would be any kind of a road ever going through there um, in that process, the, the roadmaster um, has has uh, conducted an investigation. Yeah, uh, went through the maps, um, actually spent a little bit of time with Fred Hellbush, which was kind of their consultant, um, and trying to help them through this process. And we went through the maps, and yeah, um, you know, a large portion of them are uh, 10, 15, 20 acre parcel in the middle of a pivot. Um, with the pivot surrounding it, and there was one parcel that way back when that got foreclosed on and had that blanket statement on the deed. So, um, you know, there's just a lot of broken up little parcels throughout their their land. They're clearing up. So, so that's what is before us today in this court order. It's a court order in the matter of the vacation of County Road easement on Trout Creek Ranch property located near Fields, Oregon. Uh, this matter having come before Harney County for proceeding to vacate a county road easement on Trout Creek Ranch property near Fields, Oregon. And the, the legal description follows. All of this is in the uh, packet for anyone to review. Um, whereas it appears that the vacation of the road easement would be beneficial to the property owner and to 
Kearney County for the following reasons. The properties in question do appear to be in the count in the county of Harney County. An easement of the county road, uh, an assessment of the county road supervisor of whether the vacation would be in the public best interest. Yes, for the following reasons. Uh, the properties in question do not appear to be established, developed for public use. The purpose of the road easement does not coincide with the current property development and all utility easements will remain in place for county main maintenance. For continued uh, maintenance. Or con coincide with current uh, continued maintenance. Um, with reasons stated above, there is no public purpose in maintaining a county ownership for the property to be vacated. Uh, I have no knowledge of the property proposed to be vacated can be or is proposed to be redivided in any manner. And does that coincide with your investigation? Yes. Okay. Uh, and then now, therefore, it is hereby ordered and adjudged that the road assessment as previously described on the Trout Crip Ranch property in Harney County, Oregon is hereby vacated and that all right and title thereto subject to the rights of all public and private easements of record does hereby vest in the owner in the owner of the land abutting the vacated property in accordance with Oregon law. And a copy of this will be uh, forwarded to the county surveyor to mark the county maps. Any questions? Comment, conversation, comments. You, you got no uh, feed, feedback or inquiries from the public, correct? No, and, and as this one is much like the one we did in, in Crane where it's surrounded by the, the applicant, the property is surrounded by the applicant, so we don't have to reach out to any other landowners. Thank you. So if there is no comments or discussion, I would entertain a motion. Yeah, I make a motion <clears throat> for the court order in the matter of vacation of County Road Easement on Trout Creek Ranch property located near Fields, Oregon, as read. I second. A motion has been made and seconded in the matter of the court order, of the court order in the matter of the vacation of County Road Easement on Trout Creek Ranch property located near Fields, Oregon, and as described in this court order. Any further discussion? And hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 And opposed? And hearing none, motion carries. Looking back in past historical records, we don't do this very often, but it seems like we've been hit with a rash of them lately. Um, next topic, uh, old business, is administrative cost policy. Um, Treasurer Heaney submitted a draft, and the only issue I had with it was, did you reprint another? That is the one that has the third. Oh, you put that, okay. Mm -hmm. um, the only thing I suggested or kind of wanted to put in here because it really didn't address, address um, capital projects. So I added the third um, paragraph or third uh, bullet, uh, wherein capital projects will be assessed separately and a one-time flat rate administrative fee will be assessed to the project. This fee will cover services provided by general fund departments, such as, but not limited to, accounting and finance, legal services, economic development, and others as warranted for the project, um, which might even include an ask of the road department for blading a road or something, whatever the project may be. I'm just other general fund and, and non-general fund departments. That would be my proposal for capital projects. I guess my question would be, by saying capital projects will be assessed separately in a one-time flat free administration, what if a capital project is something that is very, very big, complex project, not necessarily what we're talking about, fairgrounds as we know it today, but, and 
more and more of the finance, legal services, and, and uh, other stuff become part of it. I just thought maybe take out the one time just in case uh, a just five, so six, seven year project. Eight, eight, um, yeah, because okay. what if you had to up it or, or lower it because you had to lower it to just cross the finish line, you know, whatever the one time might need to be adjusted. Okay. Probably not, but yeah, I just I threw it out there as, as a starting point. No, yeah. and I, I like, uh, you know, the part above too where it calls out so that people understand which ones come with already set administrative costs associated with them. Um, I think this is a much more clear document than our previous it's getting policies. Bit, it's, we're adjusting it as um, as needed. It's last time we did it was five years ago mm -hmm. and it's time. So, so, so we'll take out and one time and it'll read yeah, capital but, project will be assessed separately. Um, and a just take a, the one time. For the just take one, one time, time out. out. Uh -huh. And a flat rate administration fee will be assessed. Okay. Nothing to this person. <laughs> well, I wasn't the only one having problems this morning. Oh, yes. We're okay. You're back. You're back. <laughs> uh, okay. So we'll wait until we, um, well, any other discussion on that then? I like it. Okay. And then uh, once we can get a fresh copy printed of that, we'll. So, Bill, my question. Mm -hmm. So, on capital projects, um, just for an example. Oh, wait. Maybe... Capital building projects didn't we yeah, not capital that? outlay not capital outlay capital building projects. yeah okay. I, building. that's so we I, want to add building to this then maybe so because well, I, because I, I guess i would get i would get double dean you know right. and i guess that's what i was going to explain i mean if it's a flat project and it's four million dollars you know my budget's going to increase four million dollars because i'm going to get either reimbursed or that money from the federal government. So my administration fees would be based on my budget and I would get hit there. But then if it was another, and I guess that explains it. If it's just a building. And it's so a do we want to say building and construction or building or construction? I just don't want to get dinged twice. Yeah, no, I I want, and, I, and we wouldn't. I but. just remember during the budget committee meetings that somebody, one of the committee members said, Make sure it's building or construction related, so it's not just necessarily a piece of equipment or other thing that are large outlays. Yeah. So, um, and I would imagine you're referring to the uh, paving well, project well, right that's going to happen down in yeah, Andrews. You know, two or three years from now, when that actually gets put together, yeah, you know, it's eight million dollars, and it'll probably be over multiple budget cycles, but. Again, I'll still pay the administration fee based on my budget versus, you know, saying, okay, we've got a project here, so I'm going to get hit again with an administrative fee. So I guess that was my only concern. That so, one, that one uh, being federal funds, mm -hmm. do you know in that, in that grant if there's already a de minimis figured into it, an administrative cost figured into it? You know, I don't know. Okay, we'll need to we'll need to look at that one. I mean, there's a lot of salting, you know. I mean, there's always going to be, you know, the design phase and and that. But as far as you know, strictly administrative, I I haven't seen it. So yeah, normally, well, yeah, normally, usually, the federal grants and federal funds do automatically have a ten percent de minimis figured right into them. Um, it's not. It's not my intent to bolster the general fund off of some of these types of projects. It's just what it takes the general fund departments to be able to administer and, and provide services for those projects. So um, we'll need to look at that one and yeah. see, because if it's already figured into it, we'll take, we'll, we'll take that. But if it's not, then we'll have to do a different kind of assessment on okay. it. All right. um, excuse me. I just noticed in, in reading back that, so our second little paragraph says capital outlay building projects. So if we just use that same verbiage down for number three and say capital building outlay projects will be assessed and a flat rate, blah, blah, blah. Oh, here. Yeah, just make it's that consistent. consistent with the language. Yeah, and that will cover it because there are a lot of capital projects, but we're talking building. Yeah. Yeah. All right, let me print this. Okay. 
Um, and that's kind of your concerns is kind of what brought about this discussion too with our fairgrounds event center building and it takes a big chunk out of it. So that's kind of what's started and, this and conversation. Again, I mean, the treasurer does, I mean, she does a great job of making sure that money is put in, you know, right. the right accounts just and trying distributed. To so apply the percentages just bl as a blanket way of doing it. We're trying yep. to give ourselves that ability to look at different type of projects and assess accordingly mm -hmm. and not over excess. Yep. Really, you know. So I don't, I don't, did you need anything else? No, I just, when you pass it down, I'll look, look at it sometimes. I okay. Well, I was going to, with our discussion, I was going to make a motion to um, approve the Harney County Administrative Cost Policy. I'll second. A motion has been, well, any further discussion? Did you want to review this first? Yeah, just take one second. Yep. You're adding building and construction. Uh, Looks good. We're changing from my from my recommended third paragraph or third bullet. Uh, we changed it from capital projects to capital outlay building projects, which is consistent with the language further up. Oh, that's good. Um, so, any further discussion? Uh, all in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 And opposed. And hearing none, motion carries. And I'm gonna bump along real quick like here as I'm shuffling papers. Next topic is vector control. Um, Executive assistant said you wanted that back on the agenda. Was there a, a point that you wanted to? Oh, that was a vector control. That was a what? Sorry. Grasshoppers sound like vector control. <laughs> <laughs> They're bugs. <laughs> I was going to send you the MOU uh, with the SWCD, but I didn't oh, okay. so just get that them. contact made. Yeah. Uh, so it is talking about bugs, but okay. I'll, in general deliberation, uh, give the court an update on that. I have a copy of it. In, if there's any discussion, I can go grab it real quick, like on my desk, because I actually couldn't. Read it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that'd be fine. Yeah, we can yeah, add that in. Sure. What do you read. want me to put in the title? Yesterday. <laughs> Grasshopper Mormon Cricket State Funding. They're spreading out the stuff right now. I was going to say they'd already made it back to the border. <laughs> the Mormon Cricket stuff. Yeah. Um, as I read through it, um, the questions oh, that I did have about it, is this that, the one that you're... So this is the grant agreement that I uh, indicated to the court that we would be signing. There is already an amendment to it uh, as far as the time frame in which the funding can go to. So in the initial one, it stated that the time frame could only be after the grant agreement was signed. They've already made an amendment to it that it covers the 2024 20, season. Um, and so this is... Yeah, because this one expired December of 24, is what this one says. Right, which which it will, um, that part will remain the same. So this is the agreement between the state ODA and the counties. Uh, but then we have an MOU that we're proposing with SWCD. So okay. the Southern Water Conservation District uh, frequently uh, works with funding projects with or in the Department of Ag. And so most counties are partnering with their Southern Water Conservation District for this project because, for one, they already have knowledgeable staff. They already have uh, similar grant agreements that they can um, draw from to reframe for this particular project. So the application process needs to be very um, consistent with what producers are used to and seeing, uh, as well as they have a lot of knowledge around. Uh, they pulled everything out of this grant agreement and made sure it was included in them a year as far as responsibilities and parties. Um, so are they, gonna, um, are so they going, going to administer it? To just pass, pass it through, through to them and allow them to oversee it. Um, and then when the grant reporting comes through, we 
will, with them through the MOU, pass back the grant agreement uh, reporting. Good. So they can present the grant report to us. Yeah, when it uh, comes on. on. So um, then question, since we're in budget season, um, I see automatically is $100,000 coming, just coming right straight to us. And it should be here any day, but what we have indicated with the um, those that are doing the applications that any payout would not occur probably prior to July 1 due to our budgetary constraints. So if we were to have to do a supplementary budget, we could include that on it and execute it prior to July 1. But if we do not end up in that position where that is necessary, I have no uh, reason why that time frame of July 1 won't work for this project. So. Okay. And have you have you discussed with Treasurer Heaney on on a, a revenue line uh, for this? She has been out of the office a bit, and so we've been playing phone okay. tag on that. Um, I see that she'll be back tomorrow, so yeah. that's when we'll get those kind of details ironed out. Okay, I'll get with her first thing in the morning. Maybe we can have something set up for our budget meeting tomorrow. Yeah, and, and just like any of the other grants, as we've kind of discussed in the budget, is uh, trying to find a, a separate place to put them the so that it. they're very, you know, standalone uh, as we go about the process. And this one will be in and out where really it, it will not be a problem yeah. executing the 100000 All of it will be spent. And so SWCD will not be holding on to any funds and needing to send monies back. Hopefully we actually are able to secure some further funding because of the amount of need for spring. Yeah, wasn't there an extra 400 and 425,000 is available to the rest of the counties, including the five counties that were originally uh, allowed the specific funding. And so I have a standing meeting at one o'clock on Wednesdays. Um, even today, with ODA to discuss how they're executing that. Okay. Um, they're still working out the details on how to treat that pot of money. <laughs> but the, the nice part, if um, anybody was familiar with the 2022 ODA uh, spraying cost share, there was a lot of parameters set around it as far as a type of product that could be used, right. timing of it. Right. Um, so say, and I was going to ask about this one. It says, which obviously if uh, SWCD is going to be administering this, it's just specific. The only thing it says is, um, you know, funds awarded as as are used, the, the appropriate uses for these funds. And it says as described in Section 3. And in Section 3 under eligible uses, it really the only thing it says is proposed Proposes described in this agreement, or purposes, I'm sorry, purposes described in this agreement. And there really are no purposes in this agreement. Governmental circular. circular. Well, yeah. They, the very, very unique thing about this is that they really are leaving it to county discretion of how this is okay. That's implemented, a great improvement. which is very, very unique because we had a lot of trouble with the 2022 program due to the parameters pre-prescribed to us mm -hmm. when that came down. But that's a good thing then, but I just was, it left it really vague and not knowing which any was further information now. Super, but... super unique opportunity for us as a county. Um, Harney County's taken a unique approach approach to it as well. Um, I've had kind of a team with um, Tyler Goss and Jason Kesseling, as well as some advisory from Nick Schott um, in how to roll this out. We are prioritizing the funding for the South End initially uh, due to the Mormon cricket encroachment, and we have never had dollars to go after those and really try to knock them back. And so the first First shot of this will be prioritized for the south end and doing treatment down there to try to deal with that situation. Um, there's a lot of uh, treatment going on this week down there. Um, Casey Prentice is our point of contact. He's with OW, or, or Oregon Department of Ag, but he's out of Mapier County. And he's been calling me several times a week, letting me know where they're surveying uh, throughout the county. They have really been working hard and prioritizing Harney County as one of their survey areas to try to help us uh, understand where our hot spots are. And so we're working with him in this project at large. We are actually not required to go through the regular 
ODA surveying process, but because they're already surveying in our county and already doing the work, it's just feeding into the project at large. And um, so that's that's something that we ran into in 2022 is we couldn't get them out surveying fast enough to get the treatment done. And by the time the treatment could happen, then the type of product that was allowable was no longer effective. And so we're we're ahead of the curve with that, as well as the type of products. Uh, the only discretion on that is that they're used according to the label. So in that, in that, I was just going to ask. I remember in the conversation before, there's two separate chemicals. One of them has to be put on at a certain time early in the in the larvae process uh, growth yeah, and, cycle. And then there's another one that can be used later on. Are both of those going to be able to be reimbursable under this? We actually have no product limitations on this, and there's actually some new products out. And okay. so um, that is one of the best parts about this is depending on when the treatment is needed, we're going to be able to apply the correct product. And some of the new products out have a, a much more... Um, beneficial use depending on what stage they're in from uh you know not flying to starting to fly and the product works on both sides of that uh there's product costs the the demolin which is what you try to hit in the early uh three week stage is the cheapest product to use uh because it it is able to be put on at the lowest um ratio it's an ultra low spray that it occurs and then they strip so like when you do an acre, then the next acre, you know, that there's strips that supplied in it. And so you don't treat it just as a blanket acreage uh, because then the, the species move into those strips and it still is effective within that window of, of movement with the insects. So okay. well, what I like is what I'm hearing is that this work on this with ODA can in the future, be a model for some of the other appropriate um, programs where there's similar um, attributes where local decision making and control up to a point no, that this, they're comfortable with. Really nice. And we're, you know, we're working, especially in these ODA meetings that I'm having at one o'clock on Wednesdays with the uh, Lauren Henderson is the director now. And the feedback that he's really wanting from this program is the economic. Um, loss that we're preventing. So acres treated equals economic loss, uh, you know, if it was prevented. And so they're hoping to feed that back um, to the legislation that this came from saying, here's the economic impact you were able to have in these counties because you allowed this type of funding to come down to the county and be utilized, you know, in a, a county specific way. And so high level, he's really wanting to be able to take and highlight the economic value that was, yeah. you know, put into the counties through this type of project. Glad to hear that. Is uh, So is the soil water conservation, are, just, are they going to be the ones if there's prioritized or, or analyzing the applications? Well, they, they already have uh, ways to do that due to some of the other programs mm -hmm. they run. And so... Um, that's what's really great about partnering with them. They already have the mapping. They already have all that information, and they even have a way to get back into a map report and overlay all the acreages so that when we put our report back in, we can really highlight the amount of treatment that occurred. But um, right now, where the south end had already been surveyed, it's really easy to prioritize it because we already have all the documentation that the grant requires uh, already the ones board. doing it, their board, mm -hmm. but not, not their board, oh. just Jason and, and Tyler oh. and myself. Or, oh, that part. Mm -hmm. right. And you had a, I have a question. question. Is the chemical that's being considered to take care of the grasshopper also, or just the crickets? Uh, it depends. Uh, there's several products that work on both. And so they're trying to use that product in those appropriate places. There's also bait for specific areas where it's mostly just the worm cricket and kingfish. And if this comes to be, do we have enough airplanes that can fly? I only know of one area, aerial aperture. Uh, there is one, but he is working on prioritizing those acres right now. And 
is able to do large blocks of land due to us having all these surveys already completed. He's already worked with all those landowners and putting together large swaths of land to make it the most cost effective to be down and applying. Yeah, we'll assume I haven't been contacted, so my property will not be protected. But we had a tre tremendous infestation of grasshoppers. Yeah, and that's why, you know, feel free to come in, get the application filled out, and as we're able to work through funds available, I would say with prioritizing the South End doing the crickets, you can get with us and fill out that application to have aerial treatment. But there's also other ways, uh, drone treatment with the product label and someone that's licensed to apply it. Uh, unfortunately, our biggest problem in the county is we have very few insecticide uh, people that are licensed for application. We have quite a few herbicide, but not insecticide. Mm -hmm. And so that's something that um, would be nice to have more individuals go through that process mm -hmm. because then you'd have uh, more people able to do the work. Right. But that's you know a limiting factor is those with the proper yeah. licensure. The application is through which department? Soil and Water Conservation District. Thank you. And and yes, I mean we do have really great um, aerial uh, pilots, you know that that do this one or two. But I mean we're right. it, it's they have to prioritize. Well, and a lot of them already had contracts, other app, uh, aerial applicators that could service this area already had contracts for other types of work that they were already um, committed to. So yeah. there's. <laughs> lots of acreage, lots of need. That's funny. Yeah. everything. It, it really is. And that's why uh, they know right now the 100,000 is not sufficient for a county of our size. So we're hoping to be able to get the treatment done as much as possible and then be able to, once they decide on a specific way, we can ask for those other funds that we're going to go pursue those other funds to expand the amount of area that we can treat. Okay. Thank you very much. Yeah. So good stuff. Good information. Um, yeah. And like I say, I'll be signing that agreement. I just needed to circle back on one item uh, with the MOU, but that's the plan is to get the funds. And then as of July 1 at this point, unless we have an opportunity to do it sooner, that's when we would um, send the funds to SWC as a pass through. Okay. SWEC? SWC Soil and Water Conservation District. And I will send you that email on MOU and stuff once we, once we have it finalized and that can be included. Um, so does um, that I, that agreement as well, does it have to be signed at the same time or before? Oh, well, I've already signed that agreement as I discussed uh, at the previous meeting. Now they have the grant agreement uh, with the change for like say that timing for the season versus the original language. And so I have that I, that got sent to me. They just changed it in the last day or two? Because I just printed this like two days, three days ago. Yeah, that was the original one. They wanted us to go ahead and sign the original one not so as to not slow down the process. They really want to show that they got the funds out the door on their end, which we kind of are like, well, yeah, but most of us can't <laughs> spend it right now. But as long as it makes you feel good to get it to us and then we'll sign the updated agreement. Yeah. Soon. <laughs> All right. Mm, moving along. Any other discussion first? Uh, next topic then under new business. Um, it's time for the fairgrounds annual report. Lindsay. Okay. <clears throat> we have been busy. Um, this is a summary. I don't know if you guys want these or not. And then if you want to this I think I can <laughs> Um, so let's see, to start with our grants, um, in April, I had applied for a revenue loss grant that was available through um, through the state. It's uh, administered by, by Biz Oregon, and really the intention for those funds is to uh, supplement revenue loss between 2019 and 2021, and I submitted all our, our revenue documents to them. We received a letter that we've been approved for those funds. 
but they haven't sent any contracts here. So my anticipation is that we'll see those in the next fiscal year. And what is the amount? Uh, roughly 94,000. So. And so, and then I let Bobby Jo know as well. So she knows they're coming. Um, we haven't discussed yet whether they would go in my capital funds or whether they would just stay in my operational funds. What are they gonna be used for? Um, That's part term. of the rest of it. <laughs> <laughs> There's some ideas. Yeah. We have some ideas to where we can apply some of these funds. Um, uh, so that's with our revenue loss grant. So I've also, at the end of May, replied, uh, applied for uh, Department of Human, Human Services had their resiliency hubs and networks, so the emergency management money. There was no limit on what you could apply for, so the fair board and I sat down and we prioritized four items and put them as separate asks to make it easier for a grant read. So one of them is for shelters and panels. And so this cost information that I took, the $350,000 was from um, a very nice presentation that our livestock committee had put together. And so these uh, panels would encompass small animal, large animal, multi-species, so that when this building is built and when we decide whether those animals are gonna be in the building for fair or whether they have a separate facility, that we have the appropriate paneling and styling and space to keep them so we took that we took that piece on and asked for that um well and just uh also that you know this is for uh recognizing that the fairgrounds facility is our emergency center yes. and so a lot of this applies for dual purposes yes these panels can be used for fair but also in the case of emergency where we were to have a flood of uh, livestock come into the area you know it can be uh, utilized to try to facilitate that need yeah, and the discussion around that too was we have a lot of places we can put horses, well, not a lot, some places you can put horses, cows, large animals, but we have very limited space for sheep, goats, chickens, all of the other things that would probably be coming out as well. Um, and then, so the next ask, which I'll talk about a little more specifically, is a tractor. Um, and then our fourth, third ask is uh, my, I guess, anticip anticipation on this is that we'll only get the electric and the water if we receive the funds for this to upgrade our dry barn area, which is the covered riding barn. It currently has no lights, has no, ele no electricity. It has limited water access there with stalling. So we would love to expand it and add the water and electricity, but uh, funding wise, We'll probably maybe hit the electric and walk park this time. And then our last ask was um, to put money towards maximizing our bathrooms in the new building to be able to build out. We're, we intend to have all the plumbing in place with the building build, but we'd like to be able to finish out a few more restrooms as we've lost the board restrooms. We don't have restrooms over by the arena, those kinds of things. So that was um, the thinking behind those asks. We haven't heard back from them. Um, applications are submitted. Um, so I might jump down and talk about our tractor purchase. So our old John Deere, I think it's an 80s model, uh, I believe. It is, it can't pull our Black Widow anymore. <laughs> so it really cannot keep our arena in shape for the events that we have. We need a new one. It's still very functional for using it for forks, like bales, for picnic tables, for all the day-to-day -day type stuff. But as far as it being that useful piece of equipment, just can't do it any longer. Um, and there's a there's a tractor at Robbins now that we have, they have been gracious enough to allow it to use at no cost when they need it. Um, so I would like to put together, or I am going down there today to visit with them about cost, payment, those kinds of things, and then be able to bring that back with a complete package for you guys to look at as well. Um, but we are there, we have the contingency fund money sitting there in our fund, and we had set it aside for that purpose specifically. So knowing this day was coming, once it sadly arrived, I don't know if sadly, we, get, we might end up with a cab and some air conditioning and heating. <laughs> um, so that, and then also when I go there, I'll be looking at a utility bed and we've got tools and 
in the back pocket that we need to build that build that expense or with that that item out with so that we can mobile repair around our new facility. Um, our RV park. Um, I purchased 30 fire rings and they're on the grounds right now. We haven't been put together yet, but they're there. Um, I purchased seven boxable picnic tables that can that are easily movable for us. We also, if we need to have 30 out for some reason, we have that availability. We just don't need to set the living back up. Okay. So yeah. but we do have enough items to cover that with uh, with the parks. Okay. Good. Yeah, and I think having all those other wooden ones available with fluctuation in in occupancy yes um should get us through being able to still receive that this year's estimated revenue on that is thirty thousand dollars so by having all those amenities there will help secure that we get that revenue we, yes absolutely we can um, definitely update our um, uh, advertising for that as well yeah. I think it's available thank and you Lindsay, thank you for what is the security of the rv park do you feel comfortable with things not walking away no i don't frankly i mean yeah no i mean I you know <laughs> occasionally when i drive by i just wonder about that you know um it's been a lot better recently i mean we've done such a fabulous job of keeping people out of there that didn't belong there doesn't mean we don't get a few here and there but when you get a facility like even the high school rodeo this last weekend, I bet we had there's 30 spaces. I bet 20 of them were full. I mean, in the previous year was maybe about 12. And so as that becomes available, more people are like, oh, we want out there. So I mean, I would like to think the best of humans, but frankly, it's just not that secure. <laughs> Thank you. Maybe a maintenance project in years to come would be gradually to put in the concrete pad that those rings I, I don't know what kind of rings you got but somehow or another to secure them to the ground so they can't walk off in the back of somebody's vehicle or that would be helpful so my my thoughts right now are to put together 10 of them I don't know how easily flexible they are is to put together 10 of them have them in that back storage area where it is a little more secure and as you have people that are coming in you know, and just like put them out selectively, take them back in. It is a little bit more of a maintenance chore, but it will help with things. Well, secure the investment. And those tables can flatten up and slide in there as well. Thank you. Yep. Um, so then our next thoughts on the RV park is we need to install a meter at the park because we, yeah, we tried to have them to have a no charge or type thing that the city needs a meter that it needs to be shut off for the water. So um, we have a gentleman on our board who is very capable of installing that. So I'm gonna work with the city of Burns to figure out exactly what meter they need, get that purchase, maybe at wholesale cost for Jay, and then have, have them install it for us. So to determine whether that's going to be cost effective now, I know in the past our idea was to shut it off so we didn't have a fee there. Right. Well, the city has since uh, adopted an ordinance that if there is access, if there's a stub out, if there's service, mm -hmm. there's a monthly fee that goes with it. So our county, for instance, we have a few vacant lots around town that were foreclosures. We now have to pay a water fee for those lots. Yes. So, mm -hmm. so weigh that against against what we would normally pay, what we would pay for the meter and everything. I think it will be an over time and not initially right out the gate are we gonna recover those costs. Um, but I can't see us not being ahead putting the meter in because it's $850 a month from December when nobody's using it until through March when nobody's using it. It's $850 because we're paying it for station fee, for water, and for septic as well. So I, I feel like less than two years, we'll see. Yeah. Or maybe, but, maybe but, uh, no, probably two years, I think we would see. Yeah. But keep, yeah, we'll- Keep in mind that, that fee that they're gonna, I don't know if you've started to see it yet or not, but- Not yet. Um, pretty, my, my bills have been pretty consistent at this point. I, we only get those spikes when we have high usage. So okay. yeah, I've been watching and I made a request um, for all of the fees to be printed on my bill, just so that they were <laughs> visible and available. 
uh, so we can make our best, best choices as I get more information from the public works director, things like that. So, and then we also need to purchase barriers to protect the cross street hydrants in the upright electrical. There is nothing around them in any bad RV driver. And that them may be done with our trailer at any point. So we have put reflective numbers on them to try and mitigate that people coming in at night, but we really need to do something with the comment there. And then also we are aware that landscaping needs to be happening. So I think the money that we put in the budget for to come from those park funds I think would be pretty valuable in accomplishing some of those projects. So and then where else? Um we just we had to have the meter upgraded, um, the well meter that was done in conjunction with the removal of the 4-H bathrooms um, and the 4-H building there, and that we applied for the for the rebate. Received that already. They're very timely. The tech was so it's fantastic. Um, it didn't obviously cover the costs, but it it helped. Um, and then Riley for the fair. Riley's been really active. Socially rodeo functions. Um, they just had the Sage Creek Barn event. It was a fashion show, and we had queens from um, neighboring counties come and model some things from vendors. Um, well received, well attended, uh, and uh, I think they're doing it again. Plus, the consensus is that 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 event will be back. Um, she'll be in the Dr. Jordan Valley this weekend. Um, we're con continuing to promote our 100th year fair, collect sponsorships, you know, normal business for the fair. Um, Leanne just purchased uh, like gorilla cards, sewing prizes, things like that for our static events, which we haven't had before. So I think that will be well received as well during the fair. Um, instead of, I mean, not that we didn't like the bag of flour, but we did upgrade on the bag of flour to move gorilla cards. So we're doing good in that department. Um, our planning is several months ahead of where we've been, so we're in good shape. The only struggle we have with that is sponsors and um, participants. You know, our other entities are not used to preparing things for fair so early, but I think with, as we continue to be early in this process, people will realize there's value in that, um, and it's helping us as well. And then I believe Craig and Riley are making an appointment with me to be on the radio soon. It's been a lot since we've been on the radio, so we're headed that direction as well. Um, we have a high school rodeo this weekend. Uh, I would say 150 to 200 families. There was a lot of kids, there was a lot of people. Um, we maxed out our stalls. I would say we're probably missing two to $3,000 worth of revenue. Being under capacity in our stalls, we just have enough stalls to stall all the horses. Um, but we're working on that through our project. So um, it went it went really really smoothly. We received a nice uh, letter from Rick Stalker, is that his last name? About his uh, about all the people there and how clean the grounds were and how nice the folks were. That it just the event went smooth. It went really well. And um, yeah, it was it was. I did not have one. One cranky Karen. It was very nice. <laughs> it was very nice. Usually there's a few. Um, capital improvement projects. I don't, I can't remember where we've updated last, but um, we had sent out our RFQs or request for qualifications. We received three responses for that. Um, all three of those companies had ties to our local community, uh, qualified, very qualified, and had done work in remote areas. So kind of some of our bigger, our bigger check marks were map or work hit there. Um, we invited all three of them to submit an RFP, which is their cost proposals to us. Um, and so we received cost proposals from two of those companies, and we interviewed those two companies. Um, they were nearly identical, and they were fantastic choices. So we're right now in the process of vetting, vetting their um, qualifications, and also reaching out to their references. Hopefully that will be complete and notification will go up again on that. And then we'll uh, submit a notice to uh, notice to award, get a contract on place, get them to audit, and proceed with audit. Great. Mm -hmm. Anything else? Okay. 
looks like a busy calendar. Um, yeah, so that's our calendar. So we're looking at roughly 20 events per month, May, June. Um, I don't know if you remember a couple of years ago when I was in here, we were at like eight or nine events. And then the next year was about 12 to 15 events. And so we are continually growing, uh, which leads me to my next conversational point and maybe some things to consider for the month for is uh, we're really, we're outgrowing. We're outgrowing our staffing. And I know I've said this for a while, but I mean, when we look at, when we look at capital improvement projects, when we look at updating our fairgrounds, when we look at day-to-day -day operations, when we look at maintenance, when we look at um, just keeping, just keeping up the RV park, um, I see that as another FTE could easily run the RV park there and meet some of the day-to-day -day operations, which begs the question of, you know, if we aren't going to do more staff, do we want to continue with capital improvements? Do we want to continue updating our fairgrounds? Because we can't do it all, all at the same time with one staff. I mean, this is what I'm doing. That's not even what our our maintenance person is doing at this point. So we are in dire need at this point. <laughs> and when we add a new building and more events, I mean, we've already this year. I have a circus group. The circus has contacted me. They want to come in June. We have a, a, a cattle sorting, which would be a three-day event. They want to come in October, I believe, and it's on the calendar. So we're getting more multi-day large events. And it's getting a lot. I mean, it's been a lot, but it's getting even a lot more. Um, just as when we stop, I mean, not stop, but as soon as our building project gets handed off to our our contractor, we still have a lot of work that comes on our back end, which we weren't aware of until we sat down and visited with some people. So we'll still be responsible for quite a lot of things in that respect. But then we have the outdoor and the maintenance desperate help. Um, those panels are literally tied together with twine. It's going to take, you know, a work crew of people to get that back into work in order to where gates aren't falling off the hinges and laying off people. And just, I mean, it's, it's bad. <laughs> it's bad. Um, and that's only one of probably four projects we could outline there. Forage facilities, stalling facilities. So that's, I mean, that's where the fairgrounds is at, but in order to continue down that path of capital improvement, we've got to have another person that could be really delegated, either myself to special projects, and someone to take on some more day-to-day -day and um, other activities, you know, contracting. I mean, this alone takes time <laughs> to get those contracts up to those people. Have the conversations and make the connections, and it just eats time. And I know, I know, budget is limited, but I mean, there's hard conversations that I think need to happen because this is not sustainable. When you, when you, and I see here on your calendar for June, when you say circus, is that actual three ring circus type of thing, or? Well, I, we're in very preliminary um, conversations on that. No animals. Um, so I think it's just stunt acts. Um, I think they're going to be in John Day. And then so we're, so your service without the animals. But so we're under a outdoor, tent? Outdoor arena. Outdoor arena. Is where they would like to be okay. at, which is great. So you have sound there, we have grandstands. Okay. That's that's their intent. So she's on my list to call back because she tried to call me during the high school rodeo weekend several times and I just, I, just, I, can't. <laughs> I can't do this now. So, so yeah. Yeah. Why not? I suppose I'm happy to rent you the grounds and you can put on your show. <laughs> See what happens. Lindsay, I want to say great job. Thank you. And I appreciate the support very much. It's very helpful. Oh, you're welcome. Do you have any other questions for me? For Fair Boy? Um, just for conversation, too, I guess we're working on creating moving funds into a a capital project fund for the fairgrounds. Um, Lindsay's been working with the treasurer, Treasurer Heaney on that. Um, 
mixing all those funds together, number one, it's hard to it's hard to monitor and account for, for but it also takes that fair board budget or that fairgrounds budget and do this with it. Because one year you have a big influx of revenue and then the next year it, it's gone. It's back to operational. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. so it doesn't it's provide it doesn't provide a real accurate depiction of what's going on in those budgets. Right. Even our general fund budget has got some of those items in it where one year it looked it's I think eleven million and the next year it's seven million and it's yeah, like and that communications grant came in yeah. and that it does it it doesn't um especially for the general public who's not aware of all the details of some of that, it it shows fluctuations right. in the budget that doesn't actually exist because it's very, it's already ear tagged, you know, as it came in, yeah. but yeah. then it, it skews that bottom number over time that we're actually dealing with in general operations. Right. We don't have $4 million to put towards the fair and we're just being chintzy and not, you know, that's not how yeah. that looks. Um, I guess my suggestion from the other side of that, which I didn't anticipate until until I came across it at this point. So I know that we've had that conversation in the budget meeting and like, yes, this is a, that would have been a great idea and ideally the best place to do that and way to do that. But maybe my suggestion is when you visit with Bobby Joe about those things again, I would ask to be included in that conversation, mm -hmm. um, the preliminary before all those funds are made, because now what I'm looking at have sitting in the middle, I'm looking at the DAS side of that and like, oh, how is that going to affect my reporting? What information do you guys need? Uh, how does that look on your end? So this time I'll be playing catch up, but maybe initially, uh, you know, if I would would have been able to look at that structure and how that was going, I could just have that quick conversation. And they say, no, we need this, and we could have built it into. Yeah, and we and, and we tried that last week. Your, your schedule was was yeah, busy last okay. week, and right. we just, never could link up. Yeah. Um, so it's tentatively, tentatively it's tentatively put together right now. We can still have those yeah, those conversations. Said that yeah. and it said that it was it was ready to be launched, but that's was one of the things is to reach out to DAS and Biz Oregon and make sure all of those things don't affect how we interact. The fairgrounds does as well. So, so the so the goal would potentially be tomorrow. We have our next budget meeting tomorrow. The goal would potentially be to either tentatively approve that fund or we can put it off until our last meeting on May 30th. If everything's put together right and there's no, you know, not, not really any, no problems. no problems, we can approve that really quick during that last meeting, but that'll give us a little bit of time. Even if, even if we tentatively approved it tomorrow, if we can get it put together tomorrow morning um, and get it tentatively approved tomorrow, then that still gives us a couple of weeks to fine tune and finalize it on May 30th when, it, when the entire budget is approved by the budget board. Okay, I think I think I can probably send those my grant managers. I can send them that email from Bobby Joe that just kind of outlines that and just give them a quick synopsis. I don't anticipate there actually being a whole lot of problems, but I could foresee that if we had if there was a more stringent grant with you know different tracking, I could see that I could see that happening very easily. And, and the intent is also that when we create a new fund, you have to do in the budget resolution, you have to identify that fund and what it's for. So, so my intent when talking with Treasurer Heaney is that in that resolution, we'll identify number one, that we're moving it for better accounting and monitoring purposes, but also to identify what's already been spent in, in this grant, X number of dollars have been spent in this grant, et cetera. So, so that it gives us a, like a budget note in the fund to, to indicate what had been spent because that that was kind of like the the challenge with moving it after we'd already put it somewhere was how do you how do we make sure to capture that we could do that could, we could take it right out of the resolution and put it into the into the Tyler system as a permanent note okay because that might make it but and and enter it in the minutes see. at some point too so we've got it yeah. in places in case the budget notes because that's Doesn't where my mind went was like, I really happen. like the idea of trying to have it in its own fund or maybe from do. general operations budgets. Um, but then just that tracking side on the yep. ramp part, yep. I was like, we need to make sure that we have all that very well. Um, I mean, it's documented on Lindsay's side and, and Treasurer Heaney can pull it up and you can pull it up from your position. But 
but for those of us that, without direct access to all those points of, of information, it'd be nice to have it captured. And that's on that. And that's in the resolution. Yeah. The resolution is the formal document that that creates the fund, and it will call out these expenditures yeah. occurred from this fund. So then you can go back and look. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then maybe make sure we don't scratch those lines that hold the expenses from the early part of those grants, you know, because they'll be zeroed out lines, and I don't think that we want to get rid of them after three years. Oh, okay. Yeah. Because That's it's, good to know. These are the, I was going to yeah. ask you for an example of something that, that yeah. you're going to want. It all sounds like just you're all that on top tracking of all duration that. at, at, at any five point, years. Yeah, at any point, we can go back to that line and be able to pull up this itemized expense, this itemized expense to who and when and all of those things. I don't want those to get lost with the zeroing out into the Yeah, it, it actually was my going to be my intent to go into Tyler and print those reports and maybe maybe oh. attach or add them to the resolution. That or would whatever. be amazing. And that would be ideal so that there is that paper documentation with the resolution, with the new account funds, that it can be physically pulled up by Yeah, from, the, from, its, from its inception yes. to, to current day. Yes. And if there are the occasion where you need something for the record, you know, subsequent to all, all that you put in place, you right. can always get it on the agenda item for county court to say, you know, this is a for the record report an announcement on this particular thing to help with accountability and just get it in the oh. in the record too. Okay. The minutes tend to be retained pretty well. That might not be a bad idea to do annually. Oh yeah. You so know what I mean? Whatever just, whatever you need. I mean just for the sake of good keeping. It's just another another thing you can add to the toolkit. Okay. Perfect. Thank you. Yep. Um I don't think I have anything else that I can think of. Yeah. Third rounds related. Mm -hmm. No, thank you. No, All right. Thank you. I'm sorry. Well, and just put a just little some... side note on the capital improvement deal. It was very, um, we felt very blessed, honestly, to have the responses we did uh, to the RFQ. Mm -hmm. We really had great um, individuals to interview uh, to work with on this project. And so, you know, that was sort of those, I think we all wondered who's going to respond. Yeah. To you know, I mean, what if nobody responds, right? But they were, responsible. they were both self-performing entities that we ended up interviewing, which uh, really helps with the timing of a project completion. And so uh, I think we're sitting in a very good spot as this project moves awesome. forward um, once one of the individuals is selected, but we did have an excellent response to that. And so, that's one of those things is from my seat, I look at other projects we're trying to engage in, even with um, you know, the jail and, and things associated with that. Uh, and then you see other housing projects in this community, uh, the Miller Springs complex, to know some of the the players in the industry are out there that are looking at Harney County and that are very qualified entities. And so uh, from my point of view, that was uh, really, nice to be able to meet some of them and see who is out there and, and looking at what's going on in our community so that we can you know know that we aren't going to just be stuck with you know we actually have a, a great pool of candidates that could participate in some of these um bigger projects that we're engaging in but also our community at large so just a little comment there and along those notes too, I mean, none of them are intimidated by our time timeline of having that building operational by fair 2025. Mm -hmm. That it was a, a resounding yes, we can have that done by yeah. There was no doubt. Yeah. So other than which so the self <laughs> the self-performing part is what really uh, allows that to occur if you're dealing with a an entity that isn't self-performing that timeline. Uh, be more it, what do you mean by self that they have everything internally that okay. they own the equipment the personnel the plumbing, architect the plumbing the electrical or, it's, or is this not somebody serving as a general and a sub and everything out yeah that they can still choose to uh, contract with local contractors but they also have the ability to just achieve it themselves and so that's um that's something we learn right. <laughs> in this process with the community individual that we pulled onto this project team um, 
Tom Delman's been a part of this and he had 25 years of expertise in public contracting over in the Valley. And so large public works we, projects. Yeah, it's, it's been a learning curve like this, but uh, definitely a lot of um, great things we've learned uh, by going through this process, so. Yes, thank you. Hopefully yeah. we're, you guys, the Fair Board is creating a blueprint for future projects. We, we have lots of so. input to share, like this Don't do thing. this. <laughs> <laughs> or start with this right, because- Start here. Apparently, we never asked the right questions to be able to go start with this. You know, you ask a lot of questions, and then finally you find what you needed to start with. And those are lessons learned that are very valuable. Most definitely. Most definitely. Never thought I would be as versed in this subject as I am. <laughs> All right. I'm going to have to push us along here, if that's okay, unless there's anything else. So. No, thank, thank you. you. Um, Next topic under new business is resolution 2024-16 Oregon business development um, agreement and um, for the uh, B Street expansion project. So um, county council has reviewed the agreement, the grant agreement from, from Biz Oregon, from um, it's actually Oregon business development department, OBDD. Yeah, that was a new one. As. I'm like, okay. <laughs> are are they the ones that are kind of over like the GEODCs and the you know the different ones that regionally? I don't know. I don't I, know I their structure, that, but I Business kind of Oregon. For yeah, but Business Oregon is is actually districts. I think is a common name for them. Biz, Biz Oregon. Okay. Well, I think Biz Oregon also has other functions as well as over that. I think it's a piece of it. So um, anyway. The grant uh, is for two hundred or two million two hundred twenty-five thousand um, dollars. It was uh, granted in the long session last year, and um, we're working with the city of Burns. It's for infrastructure and in, in the the construction of street extension of B Street uh, from its existing ending point to uh, the county's property, industrial property, um, which is about eighth of a mile, something like that. Um, and uh, we've been in, we're in conversations with the city of Burns. Burns is taking the lead as the actual contracting official because the infrastructure will become theirs. So, um, and and because they've got other projects going on, it's, it's uh, the intent is and the hope is that by contracting this project and other projects that they have of similar um, types, uh, infrastructure types, um, that they can get a better price for the for all the projects instead of letting a contract for two and a quarter million it's actually looking like they're going to let a contract for nine million dollars and get and get a cheaper cheaper cost out of it so um county council reviewed the the draft agreement we had a meeting uh last week week before last i don't recall now with all the parties involved uh, Treasurer Heaney on on our side, um, you know, making sure how how everybody or everybody knew how the funds were going to come in, how they were going to transition out. What will happen is the city of Burns will will basically invoice the county, will invoice uh, Biz Oregon, and um, and then the funds will come right back through. So the county won't really won't really be uh, putting anything out for it. It'll just come straight back through to the city. Um, obviously, first thing that catches our eye is the estimated project cost is more than the grant amount. Um, so who's going to make sure they take it to the finish line? That is a concern. Um, they initially, when we put in for this project, uh, the initial estimate was that two and a quarter million should have funded it. But obviously, around that time frame, as um, all the materials and labor costs were going up, uh, it quickly turned out that wasn't going to to uh, pay for the entire project. Down the road, either the city of Burns could go after the remainder for, and, and well, what what the initial portion of it will cover is the infrastructure in the ground, the water, the sewer, uh, the conduit for digital cable run, you know, to be run at a later date, um, and the red the road bed, you know, the the engineered road bed will be completed. What won't happen with this in this phase or with these funds is the paving and the curbing. 
on, on the street. So we can go after um, additional funds from the legislature to fill the gap or the city could, if it's their, if it's their infrastructure. I think the city should. Find yeah, it could go either way, but we'll have to have those talks later on um, and, and see how best to do it. We could potentially, you know, with, and I haven't had these discussions yet, but as, as options, we could discuss with the roadmaster and see if we could pave it ourselves and do it cheaper. Uh, I would like to see the city do it just because those kind of things, sidewalks and curbs are right up their alley and not you know, frontier county like ours for the unincorporated area. So those are discussions down the road, but that is why you see a, um, there. it's actually um, the estimated project cost under the agreement I'm not sure if that's broke down in here. But there is also, the cities are pretty good at getting congressional directed spending. They, yeah, you know, they're in the groove on that and they they do a good job and they could probably get it finished out. That's all. I'm not trying to just say we they don't want to, but they are, they have it's a better fit, I think, for the city. So I believe that, that 240 yeah, inc so includes the, yeah, includes, I mean, just add that real quick, like, and. Yes. So, the, so what the, the other matching fund column? What does that indicate um, in this project? We mention it. <laughs> so the city of Burns went out for a technical assistance grant, and that's that hundred thousand dollars. Okay. And um, the eighty-seven thousand for construction. Uh, I don't know if that was. It, it has to be on the city side because it's not on our side. So with the technical assistance grant and the 87,000 from the city, that's what brings up the total project cost to $2.4 million. But they only have the 100,000 secured, but they don't have the 87, is that my tracking that you're saying correctly? Um, they got the TA of 100,000, but then there's still a need for that to complete the paving or no 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 the oh. paving the paving is going to be the last estimate i heard was 1.3 to 1.5 okay, million dollars so that's not even no that's not even in, included in, in this okay no i'm going to say the construction be... costs that are listed here i'll have i'll have to double check but i'm going to say that the, the construction costs that are listed here are um what the matching city funds city. from the city because okay. i have made it abundantly clear that the 2.25 million is all we have for the project. Okay. And and I mean abundantly clear that we don't have resources to come back later on and say, okay, the county owes for this project. Yeah, as long as it says that, and as long as our county council felt really good about the contract. I'm... So the next thing the next thing to come is um the resolution here, because the agreement is is addressed to me and the resolution authorizes me to sign the agreement. Um, the next thing that comes in conjunction with this will be the an IGA between the county and the city of Burns. They will take care of the reporting um, and the issues that are in the agreement are not issues, but the elements that are in the agreement will be addressed in the IGA. Everybody will understand and it should Rolls and responsibilities. yes and i and i again i've already got county council um working on this so when that iga comes back and it also has to be approved the iga will have to be approved by biz oregon obdd um before we enter into it with because that's an element in the agreement um that, that they have to review any agreements before they're let or signed okay. executed of additional parties yeah yeah just a note on the resolution um, in the footer that has the resolution number. It doesn't have the last two digits in the footer. It's still well, on the footer on both of them. Mm -hmm. um, I'm just going to ink it in then. It's 24-2. Yeah. Okay. So uh, any other discussion? on this project? No, I really appreciate the update. I think we've all been looking forward to um, seeing this also 
get moving forward and, and to know the details, uh, you know, because we did realize that it would be a partnership with the city, even though we'd done, you know, initially help secure some of the funding for the project. So um, the, the property itself was rezoned industrial. I think uh, Brandon McMullen, the uh, planning director, about 10 years ago. So this has been kind of a project that's had no way to get to that property that for over the, 10 that years. That was the shovel ready project yeah. area that I've heard about for over 10 years. Yeah. So but having having no infrastructure to it, no street access, no utilities or anything, didn't make it very attractive. And hopefully by doing this and and um continuing to work on that project or that property, we'll be able to attract somebody to come in and yeah. and buy up some of those homes that are projected to be built. Just hopefully they won't overbuild right off the bat. Yes. Hopefully. So uh, having that said, uh, Harney County Resolution number 2024-16, resolution supporting acceptance of grant funding from the Oregon Business Development Department for the B Street Expansion Project and authorizing county judge to sign. Now before the uh, Harney County Court, Citing for trans transaction of county business on May 15th is the matter of accepting the grant agreement with the state of Oregon and acting by and through the Oregon Business Development Department, OBDD, for financing of Harney County Industrial Improvement B Street project. Uh, I'm not going to read the whole thing. It's in the packet. Um, but basically, again, as a summary, it's just that, um, accepting the agreement and authoring, authorizing me to sign the agreement. Yeah. I move to approve Harney County Resolution Number 2024-16, a resolution supporting acceptance of grant funding from the Oregon Business Development Department for the B Street Expansion Project and authorizing county judge to sign. Second. A motion has been made and seconded uh, to approve Harney County Resolution Number 2024-16 as read. Any further discussion? All in favor, signify by saying aye. Yes, aye. And opposed? And hearing none, motion carries. And with that resolution signed, I am going to sign the grant agreement. This off to Missouri. Next topic, um, Resolution 2024-14, Interfund Transfer of Appropriations Within Category for VOCA Fund. And uh, in the matter of Interfund Transfer of Appropriations Within Category for VOCA Fund, um, whereas appropriated budget for VOCA, the 23-24 appropriated budget for VOCA administration was budgeted less than actual due to the difference between the county fiscal year and the state biennium budget, and therefore requires the following changes in appropriation to adhere to Oregon budget law. And this will be a from materials and supplies category, a decrease of $462, and an increase in the administration category of the same $462. I read through it. Uh, Any discussion? Do this every year. I, this, I don't recall. Well, always... this VOCA fund and the Crime Victims Fund and the CAMI fund are all intertwined into, I mean, they're separate programs, but they're intertwined into one staff member. Yes. And two of them are state funding that are biennium. And then one of them is federal funding that works on the federal fiscal year. So, so the budget on these is always, I'm struggling with it right now to try and get it done for tomorrow. Actually, it's the last fund that I'm trying to work on and it's, it's, it's very cumbersome. So I, I'm, I'm totally in support of it. I just didn't recall if this is something that we always have to do because of those realities. Is it? 
It seems like it. And it also seems like I've been told, uh, obviously, I'm just looking at one, one and a half years worth of budget right now. But they're always negative, too, in the budget when we when we come when we uh, uh, propose the budget. It's negative because of the times we get the funding for. Yeah, the timing doesn't match up. Yeah. And the biggest one there, I think, is the federal portion of it. But so, yes, and I think from tr talking with Treasurer Heaney, it is it's a negative and it's a thing that we're always dealing with every year. So, res uh, a motion? And to approve resolution 2024 11 in the matter of 14. inter oh, 14. 14, sorry, in the matter of inter fund transfer of appropriations within categories for VOCA fund 249, uh, a decrease of $462 in materials and supplies, an increase in $462 to administrative. I second. The motion has been made and seconded. Uh, in support of resolution 2024-14 in the matter of interfund transfer of appropriations within categories for VOCA fund 249 as read. Any further discussion? And hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 And opposed? And hearing none, motion carries. And I am going to bounce ahead to the next resolution just so we take care of the resolutions. Um, next resolution is resolution 2024-15 in the matter of appropriating funds due to unexpected occurrence or condition in regard to public health, rural health fund 245. Um, uh, as an unforeseen, whereas an unforeseen occurrence or condition has occurred to wit Harney County Public Health Clinic materials and supplies and rural health clinic capital outlay project, uh, capital outlay budget were more than anticipated for the 23-24 fiscal year and interest revenue is substantially higher than expected. Whereas this fund was not anticipated during the preparation of the 23-24 budget. This will result in a decrease of $78,500 from the personal services category, an increase of $77,500 in the materials and supplies category, and uh, and $1,000 in the capital outlay uh, category. Again, um, just uh, keeping, keeping things uh, in the positive versus waiting till the end, very end of the year and uh, having funds that are uh, categories that are exceeding their budgeted amount. I move to approve resolution number 2024-15 in the matter of appropriating funds due to unexpected occurrence or condition in regard to public health, rural health fund 245 with a decrease of $78,500 from personal services an increase in material and supplies of seventy-seven thousand five hundred, and an increase of one thousand dollars for capital outlay. Second. A motion has been made and seconded in support of resolution twenty twenty-four dash fifteen in the matter of appropriating funds due to an unexpected occurrence or condition in regard to public health slash rural health fund two four five. Any further discussion? And hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 And opposed. And hearing none, motion carries. And I have a 12 o'clock, so I'm going to move along here pretty quick. Uh, get going on. The next topic is the Division 10 process and the letter that... Um, Which, if you've read the letter, this can be a fairly brief uh, synopsis. Um, you know, just in working with county council and uh, it's in confirmation with others involved with the Division 512 process, it was recommended that we send this letter uh, to OWRD uh, regarding the Division 10 process that we didn't feel like had been strictly followed uh, as it had been updated in October 
And so this is just uh, an attempt to get us all back on track as far as process. And uh, I see on the agenda for the May 30th meeting for Division 512 that this has been added to the agenda as a item. Uh, our county council to give them a heads up that this letter is coming from the court today. And so in response to that, it has been added to their agenda for the 512 meeting. That's great. I like the letter. It's very good. I like the tone. I like what it says um, because uh, there'll have to be yeah. a couple little minor things That's, adjusted. I need to work on our county uh, dates in June and just coincide that. Um, that was the only question I had. Do we need to put yeah. in a, t a court date there? We do need to, or we could say an upcoming county court date in June um, subject to scheduling. You know, that's mm -hmm. something that we could uh, in this part, I go ahead and approve for signature with the caveat that we're going to um, change the language right there on that last And line. we could use electronic signatures if we all approve if she makes the minor update. Do we want to make, do we want to just set for June 5th? Well, or I June would almost think the 20th? second June well, be... meeting date might, but I know our June meeting date in June is one to the 19th. Um, so I, I would prefer probably the second one because the 30th is so close to our June meeting day uh, to give them time to respond. If we're going to be making minor um, adjustments in it anyway, yes, just to be picky, let's make it all the same font. You get different fonts here and there, getting in, whatever, just clean it up with us no, I'm not OCD, but I should be. <laughs> so the June, what did I don't what did we decide the last meeting? Are we doing it on June on the day after June twentieth? Okay. So June twentieth, twenty twenty four. I I really appreciate the effort to to be able to develop yeah. that letter. It's Do you have that in needed? Your... It, I have it in the what do you mean that the yeah, letter? Have I have it in the agenda. I don't think I have the like a physical copy of I it. have a physical copy I can send you. Okay, that would okay. be awesome. That'd be helpful. So then we shall approve this uh via digital signature, then is that yeah. how you want to do that? Yeah. Okay. Um correspondence. Um, you'll see in correspondence, the letter from the state of Oregon and review of our audit had some items as part of the packet. I'm not going to go through everything, but it basically just had some items that they pointed out. And it says, um, in second to last paragraph, we're not requesting a revised report at this time. However, please consider the above issue when preparing future reports. So I think that's, you know, we use it as an advisory and and uh, our our accountant has already it was cc'd on it and they're aware of it so it's just a matter of uh, making sure that these items are appro or done appropriately done correctly in the next audit i i, I agree i it was that they looked at our books they made some comments and said none of it was you know actually we must change these things but now that our uh, we always are, improving and tweaking you know anytime there's an inspection or an audit over the years they find something right they're going to find something and the one item i take exception to is they um address the um landfill oh yeah. uh, financial assurance statement and um i had that to the auditors before they finalized their report so it was, I mean, it was late, but we had it till before it was finalized. So I wish they hadn't put that in the report that it wasn't received because they did receive it. So mm -hmm. otherwise, I think it's just formality on most all the other stuff. Um, scheduling, meeting schedule. So as we just mentioned, the next county court session will be June 5th. And because of the holiday, June 20th. Will be the county court dates for the month of June. Yes. Other other uh, meetings. We have a budget meeting tomorrow at ten, correct? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, a budget meeting, an extra meeting that we scheduled and was advertised in the paper uh, as required. 
for tomorrow. And then the final budget meeting will be May 30th. Any others? Um, just that, uh, just a general uh, uh, scheduling announcement for the public is that uh, U.S. Senator Merkley will be holding a town hall in Harney County this Friday, May 17th at 2 o'clock p.m. at the community center. I will not be able to send due to a funeral I'm going to attend, but um, I will send them an email of the things that are on my mind uh, since I will miss that little discussion. And that's all I had for scheduling. I plan on attending. So I'll be there. I have plans on Friday that unless they fall through, I won't be available. <laughs> um, so any other meetings of note, scheduling of uh, note? The major one would be the Division 512 on the 30th um, okay. that did get scheduled. I believe it's one to five. One to five again. Yeah. We have a tentative meeting set up for next week on the 22nd with uh, between the county, our planning and building department, and um, the city of Burns, the city of Hines. Yes, the 22nd, next Wednesday at three o'clock. Um, some time ago, the city of Burns had expressed some interest or intent possibly of creating their own building uh, permitting department. Uh, Director McMullen and I attended the city of Burns city council meeting. It's been four or five months ago now. Um, and presented to them how, why we felt that the, that the county's building program could meet everybody's needs. We just needed to maybe iron out some communication and, and identify everybody's needs and do and keep it as a one-stop shop type of a service to the public in, in and where it's currently existing with the county. Since then, and a part of that initiative, we hired a building official and um, they're making great strides in and adding and being able to handle the building permitting and inspection and, and review processes in house. There's still a few that we don't that they don't have certification for. So we'll continue to maybe either use the state or other resources to do those those uh, functions. Uh, the city of in that initial meeting, though, we knew that somewhere down the road, we've never had an MOU with the city of Burns and Hines on providing these services and what the expectations were on each side. So that's kind of where we're at right now with this meeting. It's anticipated that the building, the Oregon building, and I don't remember what the full name of it is, but basically it's the Oregon building department that, that governs these programs will be in attendance either by Zoom or in person, as well as the state fire marshal in, in Zoom or on personal attendance also to help uh, uh, develop that MOU between both municipalities and the county. I think that's great. This we're our most capable that we have been as a county and good time to help ed educate, cross-inform, and formalize anything if we need to for an MOU. The ultimate goal is, you know, like I attended a training session a year or so ago, um, and the topic or the one of the topics was time to market. From the time somebody comes in and, and whether this is time to market or time to time to occupy, but from the time the person comes in and files an application for a building permit to the time that they can occupy, whether it's a residence or a commercial business, or, or then the time that they takes them to get that application to the time their product starts going to market, goes out the door, is is very important. And even in attracting anybody for our inner, our uh, industrial zone property is very important. So that's what we're working on here is trying to refine those processes and streamline them. So time is money. Any business time is money. So we're trying to streamline those processes and and make that time as short as possible while do, having to do our due diligence and inspections and review and everything at the same time. So that's our goal. That's what we're doing there. But that's coming up next week. Um, real quick side note, um, uh, Vehicle sales, executive assistant. York has sold off about four of our surplus vehicles that are no longer needed. They're high in mileage and, and been replaced by other vehicles. So we've got that process going. She's got that process going. Good job. And um, got a, we've done round one. I think we got rid of four already. Four cars, almost $18,000. So. 
And uh, we got a few more to go in vehicles. And then a plus, I believe the road department has some uh, outdated equipment that they'd like to get rid of too, that we can sell on the same. It's all being done over a online process, um, uh, auction process. So uh, in, in addition to that, um, obviously as needs change, um, we're shuffling a few vehicles around and um, I need to find a vehicle for home health hospice in their home health travels. They've been using their personal vehicles and that's not not a good thing for liability and their personal vehicle use and everything. So I got to find a vehicle for them. Uh, been in contact with Ford Garage and they have one, a used vehicle. that's very, very good, excellent condition. Uh, should get us a number of years of service out of it. And I'm looking at making a purchase on it. It'll only be a little over $11,000. So that's within the procurement policy of me being able to, to sign for that. But I just wanted to let you know. Thank you. That's all I have. I've got two quick things. One is uh, on broadband, um, I'm in discussion with our contractors to see what they would offer if we are going to contract with them for another year. The um, broadband technical assistance program grants, there's still that possibility we might get it, but there, it, we won't know until June, like later in June. So what I would propose if we don't get it would be less than, you know, less than $100,000. And it would have to have some good deliverables. So I'll let you know more in June, get on the would, agenda. Would that grant then fund the contractor the versus grant, us fund, yes, funding it? Uh, yeah, totally. Right. If we got the grant, we, we wouldn't have to spend anything out of our general fund. If not, we would take some out of the ARPA, but I'll let you know what, what we're talking about if we want to do that. It I envision this being the last year we'd be doing this because um, it's clear to me that any of the broadband to the rural areas, it takes the I, internet service provider, corporation, entity, whoever themselves to, they compete for the grants, we don't. They, by creating this broadband action team, which I, I or someone could continue on just holding locally over the years as needed. Um, we'll have done at least the upfront stuff. Let's get a digital equity plan. Let's get a few things in place, maybe apply for one more grant, and then we've done what we can do. Potentially, what would the amount of that be? Do you know if we were 90 lucky to, enough? To 90 to 100. Hmm. <clears throat> okay, so I think that would bring us in and still be under the 10% requirement for a supplemental budget to appropriate. What's the, what's the amount? 10% the... 10% 10, 10 rev of the revenue. If we if I, receive I... unexpected revenues, we can receipt it all day long, but being able to spend it to appropriate it is another if, item. If we if don't we do got, it, if we got funded through the BTAP, it would, it's like 130 something thousand, I think is what we applied for. Okay. Um, we may need to discuss this a little bit tomorrow at the budget meeting and find out if we're going to have to build a line, a, a revenue and an expense line for it. Because in the past, we've just used the ARPA. Um, yeah. yeah, but we also were kind of told that that would be a one-time use for the broadband for that because all this technical assistance would be available to stand it up after the one-time ARPA debt. And so I think there's a larger conversation of how long. Let's you know, what are, the, the what are the deliverables... Uh, that are still needed from the county side, and, and what should other people be kicking in to yeah. do that? Where we aren't going to be the applicant for it. So, okay. I just just pre planning wise, it's just something we need to think about that that we're going to be if we even potentially could receive those funds, we need to plan for them so that we yeah can... yeah that I would plan for one hundred fifty thousand if we were to receive the even yeah. that. Um, and the last comment, just really quick, is on related to the deflection. Uh, Stuff. I was on the Eastern Oregon County Association meeting on Monday, and, and we talked about that a little bit, the counties, and uh, many of them sat at the same thing that uh, the sheriff and, and the DA sat at, and they said it was becoming clear that that $150,000 that they're going to give counties, I guess, almost none of our kind of counties can use that very well. You know, it's for planning or it's for whatever. Nobody can staff anything with it. And that the uh, Lake County has even said they won't take it because they know that it, they believe it will morph into pretty soon. The state gives you a little bit of money with these expectations and then your general fund has to 
paid to hire people to make it happen. You become part of this thing that isn't that costs you a lot of money because at the more urban and metropolitan counties, they already have all these entities that they can just add the amount of money they get and keep working for us. So Lake has said we're not even going to do it. So I just wanted to throw that out there. Okay. That's that's a good perspective and good to know. I just had a brief conversation with the district attorney this morning because I knew they went to that meeting last week. So um and he's still trying to with his court schedule and everything trying to decipher all of that. Um but he he even said that he kind of got some mixed message on it. Initially, those funds weren't supposed to be used for enforcement act uh, purposes. But during this meeting, he they used the term enforcement. And, and my comment was, uh, yeah. so many times with these things that are both public safety, law enforcement, and health and human services, um, mental health addiction stuff, the funding all goes to the treatment, the mental health, almost none to the law enforcement piece. And the law enforcement piece is very important in helping get people to treatment and whatever. And I just don't see it changing. OHA is the big winner in all this. Yeah. So that's another budget item that we're also trying to decipher real quick, like for yeah. our May 30th. I just threw that out because I hadn't heard Lake County's calm get very, once they said that, people started going, yeah, yeah, yeah. And Deschutes yeah. County, they're different. And they just said, we, we're hearing how much the little bit of money doesn't help your kind of counties too much. I, I know everybody has a lot of speculation. They figure that there probably will be some more funds that will come next year in long-term session next year, but two, three, four years into the future, they they're it very speculative sessions yes. and then it's on you and then they require it and they yeah. don't give you money. So any other discussion? No, thank you. All right. Thank you everybody for attending today. The county court will stand adjourned. Thank you.